Hi, uh, Dave Smith here again, uh, DJS Photography. This is another in my series of uh, black and white film photography workflow. And here I'm showing the uh, setting up using the movements available on uh, the film cameras that I use. I have a previous video showing this same setup but with the 10x8 camera. Uh, and this one is with the Fuji GX680. Uh, I have a previous video that shows the available movements on uh, on the cameras, so it might be worth looking at uh, those videos if you haven't seen them yet. But here's my setup. I have these three blooms. This is a this is to do with a series that I'm working on on uh, Beauty and Decay. Now I start a set of uh, images with these flowers, beautiful and fresh, and I leave them to. Uh, desiccate and when you get this desiccation the, the flowers and the petals take on this incredible structural um, quality about them which I think is very good for black and white uh, photography so this is a series I'm working on now in order to ensure that we get sharpest focus and maximum depth of field with a, with a standard 35mm camera or most medium format cameras what you would if you wanted this view uh, you could always bring your camera around here and focus normally, but that, of course, is a different uh, image. But if this were the view that you were taking, then uh, with a standard camera, what you would have to do is focus probably on this middle row somewhere, and then use depth of field to get to try and get these other things uh, into sharp focus if that's what you wanted. But the beauty of cameras with the sorts of movements that the 10x8 or this Fuji GX680 has is that we can choose the view that we want and then uh, manipulate the planes to get the thing in sharp focus. Now when we focus, whether it's with a, a standard 35mm camera or a, a view camera, 10x8 camera, we're relying on a principle called the Scheinflug principle, which sounds pretty daunting but really it's not, there's not a, a massive amount to it, it is in two parts and the first part says that if we have the subject plane that's that, the, here, this is my subject plane I want all of these things in focus and that's the plane al along which they lie if we have the subject plane, the lens plane and the image plane all parallel to each other then uh, we, can get, we can get them all in focus just by moving the lens and that's, that's what we, we would um, be reduced to if we had a standard 35mm we'd shoot from this angle or we'd rely upon depth of field. Now depth of field isn't always going to work for you. Um, maybe the light is low and you need to open the uh, aperture right up. Maybe it's a landscape and you can't get a sufficient depth of field. And that's where these cameras really come into their own because the second part of the shine fruit principle tells us that if those three planes are not parallel as these aren't I've deliberately chosen this not to be then what we want to do is to get the subject plane the lens plane and the image plane so that they will those planes will meet at a point if we can get that to happen then we can get maximum depth of field we can get the three things into focus Okay, so, and that's what I've done in my setup here. I'm just going to try and uh, illustrate that to you uh, here. So let me get uh, this piece of card. This card will show you. There's the plane for uh, my subject, and that stretches out in this direction. I've already uh, organized my lens plane, so my lens is not flat to those. I've turned it like so. So you can see if I come out to here and there's my subject plane they're going to meet somewhere about here now here's where the tricky bit comes because I need all three planes to meet at that point and when I use the 8x10 camera that's very fine because I have got uh, swing on the back of, a, of the 8x10 camera so I can swing the back on the camera to get the image plane to come to a point with these other two I have to cheat a little bit with the 680 and what I've actually done with the 680 is just very slightly adjusted the angle at which I'm looking at these and it is very slight because here is 
my image plane. And again, that's not square on. I've, tur I've turned the whole camera very slightly. So my image plane, my image plane now comes out here. My lens plane is here, and my subject plane is there. They all meet at a point around here. So they are indeed all in focus. Now I can't very easily show you that with the camera I got on the ground glass. So I'm hoping you'll take my word for it. Uh, but they are. So that's the that's the shine fluke principle, and that's one of the powers of uh, of this device here. Now. It's not always the case that you want everything in focus, and one of the one of the really creative aspects of taking uh, images is not, is not just uh, selective focus about choosing where your focus is going to be, and then sending everything else out of focus. And we all have heard the buzz phrase about bokeh in the last few years. Um, but the artistic idea is that you choose where your focus is and, that's, and, and that determines partly where your viewer uh, looks primarily in the image. I also like to do that, in, uh, as it turns out, with, uh, with light. I, I like to uh, light the main focus of my image a little bit more than the surroundings so, so my image pops out of the darkness, as it were. But we can do the same thing with uh, with focus. So we don't have to we don't have to have a situation where we arrange these planes so that everything is in sharp focus from to back. What we could do is uh, is imagine to ourselves that actually our subject plane is along here, okay, and then turn this lens exactly in in the opposite swing to meet with that subject plane then this is out of focus and this is out of focus and this will be in focus and we turn the back in very slightly the opposite direction as well so that I could choose a subject plane in which not all of the subject sits and then these would be out of focus this would be a focus point here and it would lie along that plane there and of course because we have not just swings but we have tilts we can play this game actually a little bit a little bit further because if we use the tilts in that antagonistic way, we can we can choose a, a, a plane in this direction with the tilt, a plane in that direction with the swing, and where those two planes intersect gives you a line uh, of focus, and where the actual subject sits therefore creates a point of focus. So you could get the top and bottom of this bloom out of focus and the focus point right in that right in that tip there and this is out of focus and this is out of focus and you can kind of tie yourself in knots if you want with uh, with these things but a great deal of flexibility in terms of focus using and understanding the shine fluke principle and I hope that this video and the video with the wilderness 8x10 has started to give you a, an appreciation of the shine fluke principle and remember we're using that principle uh, whether whether we can manipulate it or not. And see, it's the same with any camera. It's just that with most cameras you don't have the flexibility to make the, the sorts of manipulations that I've shown you here to get everything into either into nice sharp focus or to really pinpoint your focus precisely where you want it to be. So I hope that's been useful. My next videos are going to be, uh, now we've seen how to set up a shot, my next videos are about uh, working out the exposure. Uh, I hope this has been some use. Thanks very much for watching. Bye now.